stretch out what no series and what resource pages, all that stuff, but now that it's right like back to back because we move where that block is, um, the transition is slightly difficult for me. So we today are going to be in 112, and our homework is 16 to 20. So uh, you're not in the ebook yet. Just write this down, planner, whatever. We're going to get you in the ebook in just a minute. You then, because I didn't even say if you have to get on the Chromebook yet, I just said get one. Log into your Chromebook if you have not yet. Well, because otherwise it's going to log me in immediately, and I want to show you guys the first page. You want to go to ebooks.cpm.org, which will take you here. I know you guys used it last year, so this might be slightly different than seventh grade when I did this with them this morning. Well, okay, yeah, because Mr. Holland may do things mildly different. They're saying they didn't. Sign in with Google. Because yeah. your computer already knows who you are, which is creepy. I did the homework for um, Wednesday was 1.2.2, 1.1.2. So it's the eighth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh! You're like making stuff up, man. No, no I don't know. Some people are doing again. Okay, that's <laughs> one. Uh, not a joke, because talking about drugs at school is not, well, I mean, you should talk about drugs really? at school, but saying somebody's on drugs, not funny. You guys are bottom left, right? You guys are yeah. bottom left, the orange box. Now that's too difficult, I could move it somewhere else if you guys need. But 111 was last week's homework, right? I've not swapped out our class for this week. Your number one place you look is the TV, the screens when you walk in. That always is current. If you miss stuff, like you came back during AO, or you were out during the morning and you come back, and you look over at the board, like as soon as you guys leave, and probably actually during your class, I'll write up the slip and put it over there and swap out our board. So make sure you're looking at the right box over there. Um, now you got me all goofed up. Once you go into CPM eBooks, do not make assumptions. Do not make assumptions. Uh, what is your uh, You are gonna need this code. Yes. Yes, that's what this is. That's why I just said you're gonna need this. Sorry, right, please make sure you stick with me. It will make your life easy. I have a feeling that you were in your computer and you weren't paying attention to the words coming out of my mouth, and that probably made things more difficult. Never mind. Yeah, you might have to sign into Google again for some reason. Some of you guys might have to agree to an end user agreement. An end user agreement, which means you're going to use our stuff. You have to agree to this one thing. Scroll all the way down and agree. If you want to read that, you can go back and read it later. So what do we do at the end? Why is your school with you open? Close it. Yep. Sorry guys, we're going to be real specific this year. That if you have tabs open that we would not ask you to have open, you're going to close them. And if it's a like reoccurring residual thing, we're going to have to talk about technology. Because there's a lot of people that like to tab hop and then waste everybody else's time when you ask for the directions to be re-clarified because you weren't listening the first time. Oh, no. Yeah, and that'll be a, an immediate ticket to out of that seat to a seat where I can see your screen. Gotcha. What do we do now? What's the end? You're waiting for more directions. Oh, okay. So, everybody should be, that's why I'm kind of walking around the room trying to make sure that you should see a picture of the book. Now, some of you, for some reason, only have the English one, some of you also see the Spanish one, unless you are very astute at speaking Spanish. You do not need to care about that book existing to click it, then you have to scroll all the way down and click the I agree to get the end user agreement. Now, normally I would advise that you read the contract. Like the fact that you're agreeing to a user agreement, I would normally advise that you read it. But don't today, just scroll down if you have to. Sorry, no other options. So I have to mute now. Just click there. Yeah. Now, you'll never probably end up with that screen again. That was only because you were logging in like the first time. You'll normally wow. click that. Everybody click on the top left CPM with the bridge picture thing. Because we're going to end up at the same place. I want to make sure we navigate together. Since some of you guys just said you did not use the ebook at all last year. So you want to end up. 
Right here is where we are. And you should see the red shade book. You should end up right on this page. We are obviously using the English. So now, everyone here? Speak now or be left. Everyone click on the Math 2 book, Integrated 2. Wait, are you on the slide? Oh, that's your teacher. That was on my teacher. And I tutor in Math 3, and I got to know where you guys are headed. And at the end of the year, if we have time, we'll dabble into Math 3 and look at what's coming. So once we're here, I'm going to show you guys a few things. First off, don't go to Chapter 1. I know most of you guys think that's where we're going. Go to Reference. Click on Checkpoints. Now, I have a statement that cannot be reversed. And if you remember things from Math 1, that means it's not a great definition. If it's in the book, then it is online. Right? That statement is true. If it's in the book, then it is online. If I reverse that statement, if it's online, then it's in the book, that is not true. Just leave that white binder. That's for my other classes. Just leave it for now. So, online has some things that are not available on the, like in the book, so I would like you to stick with me. Some of these things are in your book. Other things aren't. So I want you guys to like drive with me as I go. First things first, on every page in here, these toolbars get super annoying, especially if you try to zoom. At the top and bottom of each section, there's a hide toolbars button. Get familiar with where that is because that's rather important. Go to checkpoint one, CP1 at the top, click that tab. These checkpoints are essentially, I will probably use them, but they're essentially ways that you can check yourself and if I reference check yourself before you wreck yourself, some of you people might know what I'm talking about. This, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Has an answer key. Hey guys, we got like one more option to figure out how to sit back there without your body flailing and knocking things off or else you can go to regular student desk. I'm in putting all the books in the bookstore. There's a shelf under there meant for your books and everything that really shouldn't be this oh. difficult. <laughs> We're two years advanced in problem solving, right? No. We're like two yeah, years advanced. Yeah, we're like math. Not problem solving. But math is problem solving. Right? <laughs> now, notice there are many possible correct equations. Sample equations are provided. So I'm showing you guys the checkpoints now before we ever dive into chapter one. This is the end, right? So by the end of the chapter, if I were to look at these things, this beginning part of the checkpoint essentially reviews everything you did in the chapter. So, and actually problem 103 in the chapter will say like, hey, go to the checkpoint for more stuff like this. This is like the big, so educators talk about like big rocks, like those really important things, like the foundational, the whatever you want to call it. These checkpoints, those are your big rocks, the stuff that really matter that you get covered. So they give you a couple examples solved out for you. And then they give you more to try. We will often use these checkpoints, but a lot of times I end up making them optional because the answer key exists. Oh. Duh, I'm not born yesterday. Like, if I'm just going to make you do something to do something, and I just want, like, yeah, you could cheat your way through it. So I don't always make it optional. It's your test prep. Like, to prep for your test, you should be able to knock out those problems pretty easily and check your answers. So that's checkpoints. Hit show toolbars to get those toolbars back up. Go to the glossary. Nothing much to see here. It's just like your textbook. It is a digital version of your glossary. One nice thing about this, control F. I can find everywhere in the glossary that certain words exist. Now, a lot of times, depending on the word, it's a lot. So if I control F and search ratio, I'm getting 98 results. But if I control F and search quadratic, if I spell it right, I only get 25. Right, so depending on what we're doing, searching the glossary can be really powerful. So like, okay, we're talking about this quadratic equation or quadratic expressions or whatever, but I don't really understand. I want to know more about it. Go to the glossary. Um, Mr. Sherd was telling a funny story of his daughter didn't have an independent reading book quite at the time. So he told her, okay, upstairs there, I forget if it was an encyclopedia or a dictionary, but he said there, there's, you know, there's, we'll say it was a dictionary. Go upstairs, open it up somewhere, and just start reading. Like, just start learning definitions. So if you're trying to learn something more about something, sometimes just reading definitions and different things is beneficial. So where do we talk about quadratics? 
completing the square is a strategy we're going to talk about this year. Factored form of an expression that deals with quadratics. Um, graphing form of quadratics. Like I can go all the way through here. Richner, what's up? Wonderful. Are you there with me? Are you where I am? Did I ask you to navigate away? So you're just not following directions? Sorry, man. I'm going to be really indignant this year, which in a way means like kind of like a jerk. If you're not following my directions, I'm not all about that. Okay, you guys have plenty of time to work on technology, go play through your websites, whatever you want on your own. I get 45 minutes a day. Barely that, because they stole Friday from me last, like last week. What are we doing Friday? Three of you went to the high school, and then I... Now the schedule is going to change, and you guys will be fine. But last Friday, we didn't realize that the busing was an issue, um, and it, it just snuck up on us. So the only annoying part is to scroll all the way up and see your toolbars. you got to go all the way back to the top or all the way down to the bottom. Um, index, just like what you have in your textbook. Standard, click on standard. For those of you that are very um, like detail-oriented or I don't even know what to describe, you might want to see like exactly what is required of you. Here are the Common Core State Standards. This is the, the um, what do they call it, the strand. Um, and then if you go and you want to see the actual standard, you can go through here. Here are all the number and quantity standards. Here's the algebra standards. Here's the function standards. So exactly how the state actually writes the standards. If you're curious, that's in here. What's the PI? Are we there yet? Okay. Click on student support. Guys, I'm sorry, it just makes life easier if you just go, like, I know in this class I'm going to have a lot of worker headers, and that's why I'm going to, like, push back on you to not be a worker header. E-tools, any e-tool we use the entire year, you don't have to remember what lesson it came from. So you'll be like, oh, crap, where was that completing the square e-tool? Because I can't remember how to factor it on my own. Now, these are in order by lesson, but I can see what the e-tools are really quickly over here on the right-hand side. So I can just scroll down through and look at all the different e-tools, or you can control F. Since you're on a computer, you can always control F and find things that way. What does that mean? We'll get there. Can... Okay. Sophie, you're, you're going to kill me. He uh, showed up on Thursday. Desmos is a graphing utility website. I actually applied for a job with him. We will use that a bunch this year, but we're not doing it right now. Click on homework help. TPM's Homework Help website is amazingly beneficial. So click on Homework Help and click on CPM Homework Help in the red tabs. From there, it takes you here, which is a website you do not need to log into. You do not need any login info to get here. If you Google CPM Homework Help, you can get to this page with no login. What class are you guys? Integrated to. This is wrong. That's seventh grade. Course two is not you. Scroll down. Nope, I lied. Oh, it's the integrated? Yeah. All integrated. Yeah, sorry. It might be in here. Ah, there we go. Sorry, I just couldn't see it. Right here, red book. So CC integrated and college transitions. But you gotta click a few books over. This one of the red, integrated two. Click there. What are you doing? Stop. Really? Yeah. Hands to each other is like an elementary thing. We're hands to ourselves in here. Then, let's say you have issues on tonight's homework 112. Click on 112. Now, here is where we see. Um, uh, I forget what it is in your body that controls your addictive tendencies and your impulse control. If I. I'm looking at a problem, and I can work less than, like, I can work either, like, a 2 or an 8. Do I want to put in the 2 effort or the 8 effort? Human instinct is I want to put in the effort of 2, right, because I want to save my energy, whatever else. Like, that's where this is really dangerous. Where most kids get into trouble with the homework help is when they come in here and immediately, oh, hint, 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 let's see how far it goes. Wait. Uh, what? And it goes all the way to the answer. You can just so I beg of you, yeah, you're realizing exactly what I'm talking about. If you're doing the homework, be in the ebook, not homework help, in the ebook. So if I come back here in the ebook and I go to 112, I can see all my homework problems here without the hints and answer boxes available to be clicked. If th 
then you struggle with it, ask for help, ask for friends, check your notes, whatever else. Then, after you've tried other options for making your way through the problem, then go to homework help. Do not immediately start working on the problem here because you're gonna want to click on the hint and it, like you're gonna want to and you're gonna have to control yourself to not do that and it's hard right self control is a hard thing especially at 13 it's a hard thing to control yourself do the homework from the ebook excuse me only go to homework help if you need to the more effort you put in the more payback the more like, yeah the now if you're in homework help and you want to navigate back that's all right here you guys understand how to work like folders within folders. See if you go back to your integrated C textbook or you just click on chapter one, that takes you to the chapter blowout view and you can navigate the whole textbook from there. So it'll expand the chapters as you go. Close that and go back to your ebook, please. Then click on T8384. It's lessons on how to do what you want to do. So, have you ever heard of keystroke commands? Or uh, there's a lot of different ways to cut. Like, if you're trying to do some coding or something in a computer, it will tell you like press this, hold that, click like that's what this essentially does. So we aren't going to talk about this much today. Um, but if you're trying to like do a random number generator, or if you're trying to do like a CVR as a type of probability set, um, data entry like in a two column data or things like. Like it's got all the different, it has screenshots too, which are from the old calculator. So obviously no color, no anything like that, um, but really beneficial as we get into stuff. So remember that that is there and that is something that's not in your book, right? Th these instructions aren't in the textbook. Your textbook's big enough as it is. Um, so that you would need to go to the Gibson book. Hey everybody go back to chapter one and let's go to 116. Scroll to actually uh, kill your toolbar, get him out of here. We'll chop off their head. Uh, no. Chop it off and slice it out. Uh, no, I mean, make it disappear. Eat it. Scroll to 113, because I'm about to give you guys this resource page. So let's say we have class, we do work, you know, we, we do math, and then you lose something. Like, I'm pretty sure Satya lost a couple papers that are over on that chalkboard over there. Because y'all are eighth graders, you can't keep track of your head if it was on the trash. So you lose the resource paper from class, and you're like, "Crap! Hudson told us to keep that. He said we're gonna want it for the test, and I don't want to go hud tell Hudson that I lost it because you know he thinks I'm organized and I want to keep that parse going." <laughs> so, <laughs> so in your ebook, anything that's red or blue is clickable. Red, this lesson one one two eight, and those might not be yours. But I think one of those is at least yours, dude. Oh, you have Yep. <laughs> is the other one yours, or is no, that somebody else? Okay. Somebody else you might have a lost paper over there. Click on the 112A resource page. It pulls up a PDF of exactly what we're about to work on. Close that. Go back to the page and scroll down to your math notes box. Methods and meanings, but it's easier to say math notes box. So we looked at the fact that the oh, page yeah. that you're going to lose later in the year is available in the ebook. You can click on it and it opens up a PDF of it. Anything red normally is the resource pages. Anything red or blue is clickable. And then if you scroll down to the math notes box, that is right where we are now, Satya, the math notes box. Yep. Click on point oh. or line or line segment or any of that. This pops up the glossary definition. So as we get end of the year into more complicated stuff that you don't know what it is, as opposed to like you know what a ray is, you know what an angle is, at least I hope to God you do. Um, you don't need those right here, but later in the year it can be real beneficial that I can just click on it. And a lot of times it will also have a picture with it to help me understand the definition. As we get into complicated stuff, those pictures are super powerful. You can print those things, put them in your notes, whatever you want, um, but you can't print from the Chromebooks, obviously. And then down here is your homework. And especially when a word is blue in your homework, or actually that, for some reason, this one's not clickable. Uh, it should be, just for some reason the hyperlink isn't working. So I wonder if I get a homework help, then if that hyperlink will work. No. Yeah, in homework help, it does not have everything, like all the clickable type things. 
So like this won't define scaling or isosceles. I have to know what those are first. Um, I think that was all I needed to show you here. Just double checking. Oh, scroll back up to 110. I wanted to show you this. Because dot dash dot equals. Scroll back up to 1-10. Right below the uh, rule, the collaborative. The then you're on the wrong lesson. Oh, can you? Dr. Dude, this is what I'm talking about, man. You're making things harder for yourself. Mm -hmm. Click where it says polygons bucket. Whoa. This is just Desmos showing you a picture of a bunch of polygons. Close that link. Click where it says polygon bucket and then diagram a tool. Notice how they keep opening you new links and then it has to lo load everything and all that good jazz? Oh, and then, and this is now it has a Venn diagram. But now, give me your eyes up on the board for a second. Click this red expansion double arrow. This opened the tool layered over my ebook. It did not open a new page. So this did not actually take me into Desmos. Now hold up, I'm telling you this for a very specific reason. We are going to create accounts in Desmos, and a lot of you are probably going to want to start saving your work, like as you make graphs and different things like that. Using this will not necessarily allow you to save it to your Desmos account. So my advice would be if we're doing something in Desmos and you're using your textbook, click on the clickable link that takes you to a new um, tab, and then if it's not signed in, you could sign, if we're in an activity where you're going to want to sign it or uh, save it or something like that, you could sign in, and then you'd be able to save it to your Desmos account. Okay, so be careful. Using the tool in CPM is different than using the tool out of CPM. Same tool, just whether it's embedded to the page or whether it takes you out to another page. Questions? Is there a way to like save your, not save it, start in Desmos using the ebook? Uh, no, you have to do homework on paper test first. Oh. Yeah, sorry, bud. Writing math is huge. Um, I'm going to be looking a lot this year for like what is your process. We are less focused on final answer and more focused on final process. So like how you got this or not. More focused on process getting there, less focused on the final answer. Now obviously the final answer matters, but if all of your process is right except for one little glitch, we can take care of that. If most of your process is wrong, but you copy the right answer, like that's a big issue. Or if you got the right answer, but you have no idea how you got there, that's an even bigger problem. Because you don't understand how you got there. Yeah. Um, we can close this link. We don't have a lot of time left, so. Now, tomorrow I'm going to reset groups, and then we're going to have those groups moving forward. And we want three groups of three right now, is how it looks. It's you three. I promise I'm probably going to have you jump back with these guys just for this conversation right now. So you're three, get back here. You can just push in all those desk stuff. And then you three. I want to know what we remember. So for the next about 10 minutes, I want you guys to see how many of these squares, sorry, rectangles, I should be accurate, how many of these rectangles we can get filled in with important information. So obviously, equilateral triangle, I could write in that box three-sided polygon but we already know because it's a triangle, so let's not be redundant because we only have about 10 minutes left. Right, the stuff that if somebody said, hey, describe an equilateral triangle, what you think they would need to know? Because you would assume we already know what a triangle qualifies. So what else matters? So, of course, Tazi's team, we want to see how many of these we can get completely filled in. Well, not like completely, you know, just put important information in. Is that different than any other triangle? No, it's 360 degree angle. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. No, not 360. Because when you said sum to 180, that's not very specific. Like every triangle sums to 180. Yeah. Like numbers by sides. Maybe not even a rectangle. No, triangle is 360. That's also a triangle. Two sides are equal. Be careful. Do you remember the formula? N minus 2 times 180. 
and the other side and minus three times the negative. Yeah, I just realized. Uh, we, I want to, uh, this 
class is very heavy in there. Like, yeah. I'm really yeah. sorry. It always and I'll even apologize to you once, because I, I know you're on the split line, but guys, realize we're heavy males in here. We gotta, I know. especially so, last year, I was like, so big of that. So, this is <laughs> pretty bad. So yeah. <laughs> so, so um, but, I, so, on that, I was gonna say, guys have bad back complaints, and I was gonna say that, and I looked at him, I'm like, oh, it's all guys in here, almost. Like, not all guys. But, so, does this work? I'm really yes. like, yeah, we work with the khaki. Yeah. Okay, I feel like they're really close, so I kind of, I'm not punching it. I, I'm wearing gray and white and black and white right now, so I don't think it's very much in the show for you. As long as you're like, at least covered in warm gray and terror. I just feel a lot of black and white. Um, let's see if we're all on the same path. What did we say for equal at our triangle? Um, three equal sides. Three equal sides. Three equal, sides. Three equal angles. How does this work? Angles sum to 180. Angles sum to 180. That would be a little redundant, though, because, it, like, we could say three equal angles of 60 degrees. That, that could make it a bit more efficient. If we go to a harder shape. What do you mean? There's always a back, guys. And like three-dimensional geometry, always a back. Now the question is, oh, there's something on the back. But the statement of, oh, wait, there's a back. That's like a smack in the face. Like, um, so like, what about right? This is where things get hard. What about a right trapezoid or a kite? A lot of people goof up things like that, like as specific as you can. What do we know about these things? Or people like to goof up what the technical definition of a rhombus is. What makes it a rhombus versus just a quadrilateral? Which is why we have both rhombus and quadrilateral on here. You could even talk about why do we call a trapezoid a trap? And you might not know. You want to know why a live trap or why a trapezoid is called a trapezoid? Why? Here's why. It's a trap. So if you want to catch animals and keep them like alive, like we had raccoons attacking our backyard, but we don't like killing animals, so you use a trap that looks like a rectangle in a way. And actually, this one's not a great example, but this is a good example of a right trapezoid. The trap ends up, boom, right angle, right angle, and that other side. Now, if it's one like we used to use, both ends are open and both ends shut down. So then it ends up like that. Trapezoids. But it's a trap. Hand raccoons are just, you know, cute. Not that guy is climbing all the way up that thing. Armadillo. <laughs> Wait, do we see? There's here's here's your actual. So what type of trapezoid would this probably be? Isosceles trapezoid, right? If this door is the same as this door, and the bottom is, of course, going to be parallel to the top. Isosceles trapezoid. Just a question. Yeah. Do you have to write anything for quadrilateral? Because yeah, what well, do you know? If somebody said, what's a quadrilateral? It's in the name. Then why would I? It's not it's all in the name. It's four quad, quad, four. But, no, no, no. Let me ask you the question that actually pushes back against you. How do we know it's a quadrilateral and not? A rectangle or a square or a rhombus or a, like how do you know that quadrilateral is the most specific name we can use? How do you know that? Okay, why this class has to get that eleven twenty? You're seeing the slides again. Yeah. Well, we're also two minutes behind the normal. I don't know why our class got behind the normal. Alright, so we need to start putting Chromebooks away. Um, one thing that your class was eh at doing, I love your class. One of my favorite classes. But you all started to like get real poo poo at putting computers away. So we're going to be real on you guys this year. Please set the good example for the seventh graders because we're going to be like really firm with establishing them. Computers get plugged back in, they go where they're supposed to go. If there's something wrong with it, don't just put it away, give it to one of us. 
Um, so please care about those processes. Yes. No, now that you have ebook access, you do not have to take your math book home. That bottom shelf back there is available for you guys, and I think my one shelf's got a bend in it, and I need to replace it because I think it's just it stood on it. Um, so please, we will have more talks about binder organization once we have a little bit more going on in the binder. Right now, whatever system of organization you want to use is fine by me. Um, just make sure you keep track of everything you do. So keep track of those resource pages from today. We are going to continue using those. Um, keep track of your notes, anything you've written down outside of resource pages or anything else. Your homework, we do clearly label as a header. We can talk more about that tomorrow. Um, we just had this brief log in on ebooks today, so we kind of lost a little bit of time. Assuming we get done with what we need to do, I like to get you guys out of here a minute or two early. I know you're heading to your middle of the day stuff. And I know you're in the seventh grade class, but frankly, don't want to get caught in the mess of seventh graders. So, if we're cleaned up and ready to go, so if I could just put that binder back up where it was, please, before we knock it down, then I'd like to dismiss you guys early. So, I'm giving you about 90 seconds up today. That's all I got for you today. We will dive into it tomorrow. Have a great weekend, guys. Homework is due tomorrow, please. It's normally try to get it done tonight at the time. And if you can't, it's not the end of the world, but like shoot for that goal. Thanks, man.